right. I'd like to call the meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council serving as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to order at 5.03 p.m. Could you roll call, please? <clears throat> please let the record reflect that all nine council members are present today. And if you could please join me for uh, the prayer and the pledge. <clears throat> We take this moment to acknowledge <clears throat> Almighty God and thank him for our, our bountiful blessings, especially the parish's natural resources. We give thanks to God for, for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious freedom, and we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We pray that this government body comprised of both council administration will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all, and for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do that which is right. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray that we will be spared from all of harm, <clears throat> all harm and destruction this hurricane season. Amen. 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 All right. After Bo, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Barb, before we do executive session, uh, could we please move to item uh, 6B? Six 6B. Six An ordinance to men and as amended readopt rule one in chapter one of section, chapter I of section 2-18 of the Code of Ordinances for Plaquemines Parish relative to the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to rescind and all and set aside Ordinance number 19-150 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. All right. So offered. A second. Okay. It's offered by Commissioner LaFrance and seconded by Commissioner with Newberry. The changes of uh, on line 44, 3 p.m. and the blank is October 8, 2020. You said October 8th? October 8th. Got it. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, is there any question from um, from the, the board and port staff? All right. How about the audience? All right. And to be clear, this is a uh, this is an ordinance uh, to change the meeting time from 5 p.m. to 3 p.m. All right. I'd like to call a question. Put me on is that yes. Yes. All right. Please let the record reflect that all, all nine commissioners are in agreement. And the measure passes. All right. Moving moving down the uh, agenda, please. Six C, a resolution authorizing the executive director Maynard Sandy Sanders to engage it with Woodland Borrow Pits LLC for the acquisition of a particular tract of land as described below. I don't know if y'all wanted to take this one right right now. I thought we were might be going back up to executive session, but um, it, we. How does board feel? Do you want to go ahead and handle this one now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll move on it. Are there any uh, any questions or comments from from the board? We need a second. Do you want me to give the overview first, or? I tell you what, we'll do the second. All right, seconded by Commissioner Arborough. Um, I'll, I'll let uh, Andy handle it, answer any questions anybody has. Sure, right. please. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to make sure everyone is clear on what it is that we're actually voting on. What we're voting on is authority from my board for me to engage the owner of Parcel 6 to purchase their land. Well, at, not to purchase their land, but to find out exactly what their asking price is. I've been working with the owners of this land, gee, I think probably uh, after the first month of my arrival seven years ago. And uh, 
Uh, I got permission from him to use that parcel of land in all of my presentations. Uh, this individual owned parcels one, three, and six. Uh, he made it clear at the time that he was not going to sell any of the land piecemeal. It was going to be all or nothing. When we spoke to Venture Global, uh, we owned parcel two at the time, which was 600 acres. Venture Global needed 1,200 acres. They uh, put down the option on our original piece. I went back to the owner of parcels one, three, and six and requested that I be able to purchase parcel three, which would round out the 1,200 acres contractually required by Venture Global. Once again, uh, he told me, uh, evidently you don't remember our first meeting. Uh, in our first meeting, I said it was all or nothing. It was one, three, or six. Uh, we went with almost about a 12-month stalemate until he relented, uh, and he said, I will sell you one and three. And I said, well, you know I'm going to eventually buy parcel six because that's where the container port goes. And he goes, I know. Uh, so this has been nothing that we've been hiding or anything. It's been well known. That's where the container port was going to go. Uh, it's been in all of our presentations. And I, I think uh, uh, the owner of parcel six words were pretty prophetic. He said, uh, it'll be interesting to see what it will cost by the time that you come to me and say you're ready to buy it. Uh, so here we are. I have been working with him. I probably have about an 85% solution on what he's going to ask. I've got, um, I've got two appraisals uh, as uh, ordered by the, by the board. Uh, they're, they're very close. Uh, you guys will get that at the next meeting. Um, there is an ongoing uh, clay mining operation on the land. Uh, it is our in our best interest that they would take all the clay out of that and just leave a, a burrow port, burrow pit, uh, because then that, uh, that parcel, that 200 plus acres, would be valued at zero. So we're, we're looking at the price of the land minus the burrow pit and a, uh, a schedule allowing them to keep mining, of which they would be paying us a lease. Uh, again, I've got about an 85% solution on it, but your vote on this merely sends me off and says to find out what he'll ask for. Then I report back to you guys because we made it very clear with the owner that uh, my board has final say-so. Uh, everything I say is pending on board approval. Uh, so with that, I would bring to you, well, I'd send the appraisals to you that uh, I have those right now. And then uh, what we, what transpired in our meeting, and then it's totally up to you nine guys to make the decision based on the numbers I bring you, do you buy it or not? So once again, in short order, your vote right here just allows a, a mother may I step to engage them find out how much he's willing to, to sell it, and come back to you. It does not involve making an offer on the land in no way whatsoever. It's just to ascertain what his asking price is and come back and report to you guys. Thank you, Sandy. You couldn't set it any clearer, so if anybody has any questions. Okay. I got any, all right. Commissioner Russo. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sanders, for your presentation. My, my question is basically is that uh, you've been engaged since I've been here in 2015. What more engagement is needed? Because you've already done these items. For instance, uh, the port has discussed the possible purchase expropriation, owner financing of the property, and several acquisition plans, including credit sales, you worked on purchase and sale agreements. You have worked as the port reviewed the original appraisals. You have borrowed pit maps, proposed levies, as well as new appraisal issues, legal descriptions, right-of-ways, surveys. The port has worked on term sheets and acquisition issues, including letters proposing port acquisitions of the track. You've got an MOU that was executed, an LOI finalized. The port has discussed the old appraisals and versus the new, the new values. 
You've co you coordinated the second appraisal. You've received that appraisal this year, and you prepared offer guidelines. You've also received the seller's proposal as to what he wants. What more engagement is needed? And why are you coming to the board at this point after all of these items that have been done over the last five years that you can't go on your own to continue doing what you've been doing for the last five years? And have you determined the price that you would pay for the property? And any new issue that reserves, I mean, it revolves around the title, since we have received information from a, an adjacent landowner that there's a cloud on part of that river frontage. And uh, I mean, I think that you have the authority and you've been doing it for five years since I, six years since I've been here. What is the pressing point now that you need more authority of engagement from this board? Well, if you're suggesting I don't need y'all's permission, then I will go to him and find out what the final value is. That's plain and simple. Well, if I, I'm just giving you a heads up because I get accused of not being transparent. I'm trying to be as transparent with y'all as possible. I've Again, I've got it to about what I would say an 85% solution. I still need to work out the schedule of how long they would mine the clay. So that has yet to be determined. But if... If what you're saying is my green light, then I'll, I'll take that and, and go get the other 15% of the unknown, and I'll come back to y'all as soon as possible and give you the numbers, uh, give you the appraisals, give y'all the other documents, and then the decision y'all's. And the, the reason I ask these questions is because you've been operating under these premises for the last six years, and you've done everything that I've just read off and more. So I'm, I'm curious in my mind what is now prompting the, the pressure to go ahead and pass a resolution just to give you authority to engage when the engagement has been ongoing for several years. Is there something that I'm missing? No, sir. I, I've been prepping this, uh, as you say, for quite a long time. To get all this done, it has taken a long time. If I were to wait until right now to start all of this, it would take me uh, probably about a year to get all that done. So, yeah, I've been anticipating. I've been proactive. But once again, if you're saying take the last mile, I'll take it. And and if y'all don't think I, I need a vote to proceed, I'll proceed. And I'll come back to you ASAP with what the owner says. A lot of it really has to do with, from the time I started with, um, he took on a partner, and they started mining the clay, and that was a big unknown. And uh, it's, it's permitted, so if I were to purchase it right now, I would have to purchase uh, what he, would, he calls the, the uh, full market value of the clay that hadn't been mined. So I'd rather him mine it all out, uh, make that 200-plus acres uh, a value of zero on the appraisal, um, and that helps uh, the developer uh, with their cost, too, because they don't have to mine it out. So, once again, I, I like your style, Mr. Roussel, and if you're saying go do it, uh, guys, just give me the word and I'm gone. Well, I, I, the reason I ask the question is because you've been doing it, and I'm just puzzled by the effort now to, to get authority to engage. Did you not ask for authority to engage and do all of these items in the past? You, you, you didn't ask for that. I, 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 I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. So, I mean, we've, we've never authorized to do this in the past. Is there, I'm just trying to get to the bottom line of what prompted this all of a sudden. And the, the issues that I'm raising uh, have to do with uh, the feasibility study factor. You know, if we're going to continue to mine the clay or he's going to continue to mine the clay, I'm getting off of what the really resolution is about. But... Uh, I think all of those factors come into play for the feasibility. And uh, I would not personally vote to purchase any property until the feasibility would be completed and that the investors were willing to commit to leasing and filling the hole or doing the development or whatever it takes to make the project work. I would not be one to sit here and buy a borough pit hole and not have a commitment to move forward with the project. But when I saw this, and then I reviewed uh, what has been going on, I mean, you already know pretty much 
what the seller has wanted or asked for because you've received that information. And I don't want to get down into the weeds, but this has been going on. And if you have no reason for uh, asking for this today and you don't need it, then I guess we'll go back to business as usual and you'll be continue to do what you've been doing. And if you can't make a commitment without a vote of the board, then nothing gained, nothing lost. So you're telling me to just proceed then? But, I, I'm asking. Let, let, I'll do it any way y'all want. Y'all say go ascertain that. I'll go ascertain it. If you don't think it needs a vote, hallelujah. No, my point is, is that you never asked in the last six years to do this. And, you know, you've been doing it on your own for quite a long time. And for six years that I've been here. So that's why I'm puzzled as to what this intent means. And if it means nothing than what you just said, and you can't make a commitment to the owner uh, without the board approval, and you can't sign any documents without the board approval, then I'm not sure why we're here discussing this today, I guess. I've been doing for five years what a prudent person in my position would be doing, knowing that I will need this property when the time comes, and I am getting closer and closer to that. And again... My last thing is to get the schedule, and I can, I'll gladly do that. Uh, if you guys, if that's what you're telling me, I'll, I'll continue to do what I'm doing. Yeah, I think you're missing my point. I, well, perhaps I am. Yeah, my, my point is what prompted this to come forward when we haven't had to deal with this in the last six years, and you've been trudging right along, and, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say, and I don't want to belabor the point, but if you get a feasible feasibility study and a commitment, then we can do some business. I'll leave it with that. All right, well, Mrs. then Newberry. I will then ask for the vote, and I will uh, pursue this with the owner of Parcel 6. Since I took on this legislation, I, I contacted uh, the port attorney, Mr. Rathborn, who was not able to attend tonight. And I asked him that same question, Mr. Roussel, um, and also he's, he pretty much said the same thing Mr. Sanders said. It's just a transparency. You know, somebody along on his board's always looking for transparency, and, and I, I think they really tried their best not, you know, to, to give us that. And this is just one example. Uh, after signing this LOI with the container terminal, I think this is just a, a step that, uh, Mr. Rathborn felt and Mr. Sanders felt that was um, a good resolution to put together for us to move forward to to bring transparency um, with the board and also with the public. And my only response to that is the transparency. I haven't seen the LOI. I haven't seen the appraisals. So, uh, you know, I, the transparency, I agree, has not been there. But we've heard many times that, uh, you know, not to micromanage or manage the, the port staff, which we haven't done. So I don't know why this is so important of a vote to be moving forward with just <clears throat> authorizing the engagement when you've been engaged for six years and undone just about all of these things. Or not just about, but these things and many, many more. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. Point taken. Commissioner Gooey. I'd like to ask the board if there's no objection that Sandy proceed. Speak now. And if, if there's silence... Silence, in my opinion, would be your authorization to proceed. So I'm asking now if there's any objection to allowing Sandy to proceed without having to go through the approval process. I would like to just ratify it. Okay. okay. Commissioner Bartholomew. My opinion is that you proceed like you've been proceeding. When the issue comes up for approval, come back before this board. It was the information that is needed. And I'm not going to ratify anything. You do what you do. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Loud and clear. Commissioner Black. All right. So if, if that's the board's wishes, then we can't, we can't chastise them when they go out independently or with verbal approvals from folks like the chair or the vice chair to do things. And that's my, that's, you know, this is the first time I've really gone through this legislation, but I think the point is, and maybe I'm missing a point, but I think I thought the point was just to ratify it. Ratify what you've been done. But if we vote on it and we ratify it, then from here on out, I think you guys have to take the position of, 
I have to come before the board and get it in writing and a resolution to go ahead and negotiate on things further, which provides the transparency that Ms. Newberry is talking about. So I think we are really in a situation here where we're going to change the course of how the port operates, the directors operate, in conjunction with the board. If we, if we ratify this and we say, here's a resolution authorizing you to do, like Mr. Russo said, I agree, a lot of the things that you've already done, and this is just a ratification of it, then here on out, this should be the protocol we go through. Do a resolution, list it out, and then you guys move forward on whatever we ask you to do, right? Yes, now, sir. now if we don't, and we just say, are we going to give you a verbal just to move on and do what you do? I think the board has to realize is that we set in precedent. I hope I made that, that point clear. I yield to Dr. Gooey. Then I have a couple comments. Yes. Commissioner Gooey, please. Uh, and I, I get your point, Bo, but this project is so important to Plaquemines Parish, and we have to show some unity. Because if we don't show unity, there's another group up the river that has unity, and they're making a pitch for a container port. Right. If, we, if we go through with this and it fails, what we're saying is, Sandy, you cannot proceed. And that's my concern. If we can verbally give him the authority to go, we're safe, we're unified on that. If we bring it up for a vote and it fails, which God forbid it does, I don't know if I want to take that risk. But if we bring it up for a vote and it fails, I think this board has made a decision we're not interested in this project. So, you know, Mr. Russo just said, if not 90%, maybe all of these items have already been completed. So then why would it fail? Well, I, I want to interject for just a moment. So some of the reasons why it may fail um, are this board was literally given an email just mere hours ago about um, some of the information around the, the value or lack of value around the borrow pits. Um, maybe the information isn't exactly complete. We've been asking for this information for a long time. Um, I don't know if it's by design or otherwise for this board to get crucial information on votes literally three hours before we're going to sit here. Um, but that could re you know, be a reason why some commissioners aren't uh, super thrilled to pull the trigger on this without just as much information as possible in front of them. I yield. Well, as the chairman, do you feel comfortable with them just taking a verbal and not any, I mean, we're not even agreeing here, right? So you're authorizing them verbally to do whatever they want to do? Are you okay with that? No, that's that's not where I'm coming from. That's not been one of my arguments at this at the table today. Okay. And, and my comments are is that we haven't given them approval to do what they've done up until now anyway. So my question was, why do they need the approval to continue to get past the goal line when they've already gotten the proposal, they've already gotten the prices, the appraisals, and all of the things that I've already listed. I believe that they're, they know. And I believe that there's a lot more information that's not being shared that I, the questions in my mind, why is this needed? So, I mean, I don't understand why we would, if we're going to do what you say and pass this, and then they're going to come back and give us items to approve and so forth, I would say then the resolution ought to say we authorize Mr. Sanders to engage to do this, 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 and this, and come back to the table for approval, which I don't see that happening. All I see is that we're saying engage what he's been engaged on for the last six years. So if you have a list of authority or some checkpoints for transparency, be great. Mm -hmm. but this resolution to me doesn't make anything more transparent than what has been done for the last six years. Six years. And the, all of these items that I'm listing have not been brought to the board for discussion or approval or any of those items for transparency's sake. These items are gleaned from a lot of mining of information trying to gather where we are in the process. You know, the board hasn't been uh, told we have done a new appraisal or we have negotiated term sheets or MOUs or LOIs or uh, we've received the seller's proposal. 
The board has not been apprised of all of those pieces of information. So, you know, all of that stuff has been done without any authority from the board to do those individual steps. And so what raised my antennas is what happens or why is this needed now? And if we're going to go to a different management system of the administration and the negotiations, this is not the resolution that does it. All it says is engage. And I go back to my, my original question is, what more engagement is needed except to bring us the final proposal for approval, up or down? Now, I would hope they see that there's no commitment from the administration, as Mr. Sanders has said, that everything is subject to the final approval of the board. But I'm hoping that there is a period of time where the board will be able to sit down, read it, and absorb it, and make comments to go back and do anything that the board is not satisfied with for negotiation purposes. So, I mean, you know, I always ask for transparency, but I haven't had transparency. Mm. So, I mean, when we talk to transparency, I'm going to get the next few items on the agenda are going to talk about calendars and transparency, which are much more simpler facts than what we're talking about here. So anyway, I understand where Dr. Dewey's coming from, and I agree with him. I wouldn't want to see it fail either, because I don't think anybody sitting up here is against this project. I think how we get there is a difference. You know, if anybody sit up here and say anything or smirk or uh, try to make belittling of this project is wrong. Because I think we, excuse me, I think we all support the project. But it's how we get there. And my path to getting there is that we have to have a positive feasibility study and a commitment from a land leaser for us to less be the lesser two to make the deal. And I'm starting to repeat myself again about buying a hole with nobody to utilize it. So uh, whatever the board's wishes are, but I, I don't see the need for this resolution unless you can tell me what the need is, in which we haven't established it yet. Thank you, Commissioner Russo. Are there any other questions from the board? All right. I will, I will be abstaining from this vote because I have a uh, business relationship with an adjacent uh, landowner. Call it. Oh, please, um, Mr. Henry. Thank you for joining us. You look very sharp today. Thank you, sir. Listen, um, I agree with Mr. Gould, Benny. Great point. Both great point. The Colonel, the problem I have with this, this is a very piece of property that's really necessary. I, I would like to explain to the public, since we did it before, why this can't be done on the internet domain if we get to that point. Since it's a necessary uh, piece of property. You know, that, that, that was always my taking. Could you explain to the public why we won't go the internet domain route? That's all. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Can we pull eminent domain on this? Yeah. That's an arrow in our quiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's not like it's a piece of land that's not being used. This piece of land has an ongoing business with it. If you uh, were up on current events, uh, the Port of New Orleans tried to pull eminent domain on Violet Port. I remember that. St. Bernard. Yeah, Port of St. Bernard. Um, and the judge came back and said, not so fast. That's that's not the... Uh, the, uh, the recognized cost of what this property <coughs> is. And they got charged a lot more because there is an ongoing business on that. I say eminent domain, uh, even though it is, uh, uh, the port does have that weapon, and I call it a weapon because you're taking something from somebody for the good of the, uh, of the whole. Um, I don't think that that should be used very liberally. I think there are other steps that we can do that, that make the owner of that property whole. If I own that property, I would like to be dealt with in good faith. And so, uh, again, we have two appraisals on it. Um, there is an ongoing business on it that we're taking that into consideration. 
We are trying to get, uh, be fair and give him the fair market value of the land based on the appraisals and the clay that he is mining for the back levy. I understand. I just want the public to be aware of it. Okay. Thank you. Sandy, why haven't the, um, why haven't the appraisals been shared with the board? I mean, it seems like that information would be, you know, helpful moving forward. I could give it to you piecemeal, uh, just like the one I gave you today. Mm -hmm. It's because I have been asked three or four times, and I gave the same answer three or four times. And obviously, if I keep getting asked the same question, then you're not believing what I'm saying. So I got two professional third-party sources to comment on the value of a borough pit when you buy it and what a developer, not the landlord, what a developer has to spend money on that land to develop it. All right, there's three costs of that 200 acres. There's the cost to buy it, but if there's a burrow pit, then the appraisal says that value zero. So it works out in the landlord's favor. I don't have to pay the per acreage cost for 210 acres. Then there's two other costs, and they are borne by the developer. And one of those costs is if you're going to develop the site, you have to muck out what's on the land, which is very costly. If, if it's already been mucked out, then the developer saved that cost. The, the third cost, again, it's a developer cost, is that he has to refill that hole with a subterranean material that is has a composite to withstand the PSI of the project that's going to be on top of it. In this case, it's a container port. And that's why you have engineers that do all these studies, and they will say you have to have so many pilings per square foot. You have to have this type of grade sand, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not a cost to the landlord. That is a cost totally born by the developer. Sandy, I think what I was asking is the, the two appraisals, how come they just haven't been sent over to uh, well, us? Well, I was going to put the whole package together. Here are the appraisals. This is what he's... Uh, offering to sell it. Mm -hmm. This is a schedule that allows him to keep digging the clay. Uh, all that would be together, and it's not like you guys are going to turn around the next day and say, okay, voila. But uh, I was going to put a package together for you right. and not give it to you all piecemeal. And the only reason I gave the burrow pit to y'all is that that's come up, I would venture to say, on nine different occasions. Right. Uh, some of them have been in a public meeting, and again, I keep giving the same answer, but obviously now, it's not being taken as gospel. Now, given the last port development is, is sitting vacant due to market forces, um, I, I, I just am very, very cautious um, that the board make a major decision without having all of the information that seems to be already gathered. If you could just send that over. We would appreciate it. Okay. Mr. Thank Chair. You. But if I may, oh, you're, you're comparing an apple and an orange. The I, I don't, piece we bought. I don't think so. I just want the I just want the appraisals, How please. You pay for that land. If you could just send me the appraisals, that would be great. Zero. Thank you. All right. could, but thank, again, thank I'm you. not gonna let you just say that in a public meeting I, when it doesn't have bearing. But I will send y'all the appraisals. I think it would be very useful documents to for this board to make decisions. And we'd appreciate them before Okay. Yeah. Mrs. Mr. Newberry, please. Mr. L, you had a question? I, I was just going to. Mrs. Newberry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Sanders, um, since um, besides Council Member um, Bo Black, um, and also what Mr. Roussel said, we're going to go ahead and withdraw this legislation, and you're going to move forward with this, and you are going to come to the board, and we're going to start having meetings so everybody will understand what's going on with this project. Yes, ma'am. I look forward to it. Before you withdraw it, may I make a comment? Uh, Mr. Sanders. Yes, sir. All of those items that you mentioned, you know, that's all part of negotiating the, the land purchase, and I understand that. And, you know, it doesn't really have a lot of impact or bearing on me because if the developer is willing to do a feasibility study and include that hole in his feasibility study that he's willing to fill at his expense and he's willing to come here and lease it from us, that's you know, really the bottom line for us, you know, the, all of this other uh, 
discussion about how we get there. We haven't been included up until now. And so if you have a feasibility study and a, and a, a property value that he's willing to pay, and you have a clear title, which is the latest situation that I think needs to be cleared up. Are you familiar with that, Jed? I am. Okay, so do you have you done a title search on that property? And we have. I did a quick look at the assessor's map, and it shows that that property does not belong to the Woodlands. Planters. Well, let me tell you about uh, the assessor's maps, and don't take it personal, Miss Assessor. But we had an incident just recently where we've been uh, looking at assessor's map, thinking that we own the turnouts on Good News because the assessor's map said that. And come to find out, we didn't own it. So my point is, is that the assessor's map may be accurate and it may not be accurate. But without a due title search, which has been done by the individual who is claiming that River Batcher and dual, dual ownership, that needs to be clear. Uh, we're in violent agreement, and I, I agree okay. that would be the way to, to rectify that. I just, I, I got this info right before I went home and took a shower to come here. Uh, so I did a quick look at the assessor's map, and that's, that's all I got. But I'll run that to ground. I fully agree with you. Commissioner Cognovich. It tells you on the assessor's webpage on the map that the map's on 100% accurate, so you can't go by that. But yes, sir. Okay. All right. It seems like we need to be moving on here. Thank you all very much for the spirited discussion on this. All right. One more? Mr. Oh, Mr. Crapel. Okay. Foster, we've been um, we've been discussing this, this item for uh, a, this item's been withdrawn. a little while here. The, the item is withdrawn, but if, if you have any thoughts you'd like to share with us, I know you missed the, the bulk of the conversation here. Um, well, I do. But please step to the mic and just state your name and address. Some of this, well, first of all, my name is Foster Crapel, and I live at 21997 Highway 23, Fort Sulphur, Louisiana. And good evening, and thank you for letting me talk just for a minute. Um, my mom told me this was the year of the peas. I asked her how she came up with that, and she said the pandemic and politics. I thought she might be referring to the payroll protection program because without it, 2020 would be rougher than it has turned out to be. Hurricanes and tropical storms have helped, uh, but a beautiful weather today is making things a little better. I also thought about telling a Boudreau and Thibodeau joke. Oh, come on. I was going to Boudreau, Sandy was going to be Thibodeau. The only problem is that nothing funny came to mind. Why are you guys dead set on killing a successful business that employs 23 employees? <clears throat> Doesn't include the guides and marinas that benefit from Woodland Plantation. As most of you know, my parents and I bought Woodland 24 years ago, this coming January. The title abstract said we bought property fronting on the river, meaning we bought the Batcher. Now I'm hearing that the Plaquemines Parish Port is trying to buy property from Woodland Borrow Pits and the LSU property contiguous to Woodland Plantation, and that Woodland Borrow Pits is claiming that they own the Batcher. They don't. A dual chain of title exists. If need be, I'll file a predatory action to obtain judgment adjudicating ownership. There are 150 miles of riverfront in Plaquemines Parish. Why do we have to build a container port right on top of Woodland? Does the parish have a master plan? And if so, where's the container port designed? We don't have rail or levee at this location. How is that going to work? People tell me we need jobs and, there we, and that we are broke. I say we're not broke because of lack of resources. We're broke because of poor management of those resources. John Meekham never had a winning football team because he didn't know how to manage the team. LSU was terrible during the 90s. Excuse me. It was Tom Benson bought the Saints. They began winning. LSU was terrible during the 90s, but when they hired Saban, they immediately became a winner. Woodland was abandoned with nothing going on when we bought it. Now it's profitable. You don't destroy one successful business to build another. It's poor management again. I have investors interested in building another hunting and fishing lodge where we'll farm crawfish, bamboo, cypress, turtles, frogs, and fish. Some people say, what's that going to do for our economy? 
Well, there are farms like that in Europe that are employing 1,000 people. They're restorative. They're sustainable. We have to start taking advantage of our wonderful resources. I see trucks leaving the parish every day filled with shrimp, crabs, and more recently, crawfish. They're doing nothing for our economy. They're just harvesting it. We're killing the goose that laid the golden egg. The old East factory in Belchase has been derelict for 35 years or more. It is one of the more desirable pieces of property in the parish, but yet we can't figure out how to deal with it. How will our children and grandchildren deal with all the industrial sites you guys want to build when we can't even take care of that small building? They will be brown fields sitting on the side of the river. Ed Perrin from Lafitte, an old friend of the family, is 86 years old, and he told my dad recently that the tides keep getting higher and that his road is often underwater. Our coast is subsiding, eroding, and sea levels are rising. That's not a good formula for Plaquemines Parish, nor is building an industrial site right on top of Woodland. We have an opportunity to do positive things moving forward. We can and should do those things. This parish is a wonderful, rich place that has potential to be great. It's up to us to make it that way. Thanks Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Mr. Propel. We really appreciate your time. I appreciate your Are there any questions from the board before moving on? Okay. No? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Moving on the agenda, please. 6D. A resolution of the Plaquemines Parish Council acting as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, authorizing Port Executive Director Maynard Sanders to enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement buying between the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District and Plaquemines Parish gov Government to accomplish the goals set forth in this resolution and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Yeah, I'll move with that next for a second. second. I'll second. All right, offered by uh, Commissioner Newberry, seconded by Kognovich. I'd like to um, offer a change. On 32, after the word channel, please insert Fort St. Philip Harbor. I'm sorry, Fort, uh, Fort Jackson Harbor. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. If you don't mind, John Helmers is here. Certainly. And I uh, think he might. Uh, there's strict guidelines on that with the core. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I just want to loop in that uh, the Fort Jackson Harbor is uh, connects to uh, the MSRC dock, which is owned by Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal Authority. Uh, there are boat launches there that are needed for oil spill response, uh, etc. Um, and and that's that's the reason for it. But John, please. Yeah, no, that's no problem. Um, the list we put together has been approved and vetted by um, the Corps. Uh, we can add that without any issue. You know, the Fort Jackson, as you and I spoke about, um, it's no problem to add it to the rotation of bringing it back. It. But we feel that the list that we gave you is the, the top priorities right now, that Bureau's Boat Harbor is in desperate need because when the tide really goes out, it's a mud flat. So we need to get that done. And um, the Point Lahash Harbor is also... Uh, pretty filled in and then we have an opportunity to put Port Eads back in commerce when the core um, dredges South Pass which could be later this year but I understand we should get a ruling towards the end of this month because of the, their fiscal year ends the 30th and they have that money appropriated the bids came in a little bit high um, for the core it was over 25 percent higher than what they estimated so they're reviewing that right now, and we'll get a we'll get a final uh, decision on that on the thirtieth. But as that sits, we can add that um, Fort Jackson into the list. Got it. Thank thank you very much. Um, are there a couple of folks in the queue? Uh, Commissioner Russo. Uh, I just wanted to point out that when we get to the council agenda, we'll have to adopt something there. Yes. And under that section there, we have agreed with the legal department to add uh, some language in there that the priority list will be approved by the council. Correct. We agree. The administration agrees we will add to the CEA language saying that, and I just want to be clear on this, the project prioritization that the council will have approval on that. Um, uh, now, like I said before, I'm not interested in getting into means and methods because all this has to be submitted to the core. They have to approve it. And, you know, to the extent there's back and forth on that, coming back and forth to the council for every little decision isn't something I'm interested in. But obviously, project prioritization, we totally support. And I'm sure working together, we can come up with a, an acceptable list for everybody. All right. Uh, Commissioner Kogovich. Uh, 
Are we talking about dredging tiger passes? Duck getting the bid came in and no, we we talking about South Pass tiger yeah, I know, pass. But tiger their bid pass. came in high also, but um, it'll be rebidded out. It's not their funds are not tied to a deadline because it's a maintenance stretch. That last thing I heard, they it went out. It was overbid and the Cohen, uh, I think Crosby. Did some negotiating and agreed? Mm, I just understand that it's out for bid again right now. It went out twice, and it was high twice, and I'm not sure at this point when it's going to go out a third time or if they chose the negotiation role. That's what I had heard the other day. Right. Thank you. All right. All right, any other questions? Okay, so could we please add in there um, on line 32 after the word channel, the Fort Jackson Harbor? And John, you're absolutely right. No shortage of uh, sediment to deal with down here, man. I second it. All right. So offered by Mrs. Newberry, seconded by Roussel, and we'll go ahead and call a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Are there any comments yeah, from? Yeah, John, would, would this help um, the lilies and all that area while the ha by the harbors when they dredge? They dredge those lilies out of the harbors also? Do you know? Funny it'll thing? it'll help at that point, but they will blow well, back. I know. They'll, they'll go back. But... Yeah, they'll, they will come back. Thank you. Commissioner Bartholomew, do you, do you have anything? Yeah, well, I was saying about the lilies, is there any way possible for us to get a vehicle or vessel to keep those uh, con under control? That way, we, if it is, comes into the marine, we would push it yeah. right. on top there, of the there right is a, so There is a vessel out there that kind of scoops them up and, right. and throws them back. Is there any way I'll possible? Look into that and okay. bring it to you for budget. Right, see if we can get something. What I'm talking yes, about is so maybe some of this money. Right. We got it. Uh, no, I don't think that this money is specifically for dredging and access to the harbors. I understand that, but it, it, it impedes the process of uh, entering the harbor as well as filling the harbor up with the lilies as they die to go to right. the bottom and eventually it fills it up. I understand. So mm -hmm. if we can eliminate all, all uh, that all together, I mean, we won't have to worry about that filling it up. Gotcha. I will look into it. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. We're going to clean, clean some things up procedurally here. I'd like here. to remove my second. Thank you. Right, and I'm going to offer with change. Thank you, Mrs. Newberry. Please go ahead. Uh, line 32 at the channel, Fort Jackson Harbor. Thank you. And I'll second. All right. Offered by Commissioner Newberry, seconded by Cognovich. And are there any comments from the public? All right. All right. I'd like to call a question. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Mr. And Chairman, if I may. Uh, yes, please. Just, I'd be remiss if we didn't thank uh, John Helmers and Rennie Burrs and Ken Rathburn, the Port Attorney, uh, working with myself and our team to make sure we get this done. We've been working on this project for a good four to five months now, making sure we get it right. So I just want to thank the collaboration. And, and I just want to say, I know Mr. Helmers is eager to get moving on this. So we're going to um, give one of you guys a resolution going ahead and accepting the prioritization so that at the next council meeting, you guys can authorize that and he can start moving forward on the projects. Got it. Thank, thank you very much. And I do want to acknowledge Paul, your efforts and uh, John and Rennie on this. We really appreciate y'all working together behind the scenes to get it done. Thank you. All right. Moving down the agenda, please. 6E. A resolution of the Plaquemines Parish Council acting as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, authorizing and directing, directing the initial initiation of litigation related to the proposed Bell Chase Bridge project, authorizing and directing the Port Chairman Richie Blank to engage special counsel for such litigation and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'm sorry, we need to do executive session before that one. My apologies. Item 2A, executive session. Executive session pursuant to LRS 42 17 A10 to receive attorney client privilege and information with regard to the legal standing of the port and matters pertaining to the proposed Bell Chase Bridge project. Commissioner Roussel. So moved. Offered and seconded by Blink. Go ahead and vote on it. All right. And the vote passes 9-0. Uh, Please excuse us for a few moments. Oh. 
552. Thank you. All right. And the Plaquemines Parish Council, serving as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor Internal District, is going to executive session at uh, 553. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to do it again? Yes. Okay. All right. Just a minute. Please let the record reflect that uh, we're coming back from executive session at 6.18 p.m. and no binding action was taken. All right, moving down the agenda, please. Item three. <coughs> Status report. <Yeah. coughs> Item three. Status report by the executive port director. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, Madam Vice Chairman, members of the board. I am Sandy Sanders, Executive Director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. Follows as my Executive Director's report for the reporting period of 11 to 23 September. During this time frame, the port was cited for its assistance with the Port of Lake Charles during the hurricane relief. Also, the port staff prepared many household goods and food products in the port's relief effort it was spearheaded by our own Melissa Morrell, whose husband Pete is leading a volunteer delegation to the Lake Charles area. Thank you, Melissa and the port staff. Donald Durr also headed up and sent two uh, captains and one of our boats over to be poised to assist in their efforts. <clears throat> uh, weeks ago, an article appeared in the Gazette addressing the grim news of our parish finances. Uh, in keeping with our education awareness of port activities, I thought it would be a good time to revisit and review the economic development horizon based on two projects, that being Venture Global and the proposed container port. I was gonna give this at the last meeting, but uh, I, due to an illness, could not make it. But. Uh, I would like to first review the economic impact of the Venture Global, and this is just their phase one, which is an eight and a half billion dollar investment. Um, this was given to us by Lauren Scott, uh, PhD in economics, and he put a caveat on there. It's important for the reader to understand that these figures are very low. They are the minimum estimate of how local government revenues will be impacted by, by these developments. Of the $8.5 billion investment, he estimated that $6.8 billion would be total expenditure in the state. And at peak construction, it would be 2,000 workers, uh, and that came to us from Venture Global. That throws off $20 million in payroll earnings per year of 250 employees whose average salary is $80,000. There are also seven 175 indirect jobs with an average of 40,000. And that's a multiplier from Dr. Scott of 3.1. So with the total of 1,025 total jobs, permanent jobs, to 775 plus 250, that is an additional 31 million in annual payroll earnings. That's 306 million in sales tax during construction, in total construction, <clears throat> excuse me, four and a half cents per parish tax times 10 years. So the taxes over 10 years is 86 million taxes due to operating expenses, and that's 215 million operating expense times four cents times 10 years. Also, that's 20.4 million taxes based on a total earnings of permanent jobs. And that's total earnings times four cents times 10 years. So with a total of 408 million sales tax revenue to our local government taxing bodies, that's, that's economic development. And if you look at what the paper cited last time in that article, say that the Plaquemines Parish government finances have, have been bleak for several years due to the downturn in oil and gas I follow, I'm sure you nine guys do too, I follow every day the cost of a barrel of oil and I don't see it swinging back like it was. 
In 2008, we were an income of 50 million to the parish in royalties, and now we're down less than 10. So what are we gonna do? I think the, the writing is on the wall. We have to diversify our economy. If oil and gas comes back, thank the Lord. But that is why it is so important to bring these projects here into the parish. The next project also, again, cited by um, Dr. Scott, was the economic impact of a container terminal development. And these numbers are low. Uh, he talks about in-state capital expenditure of $857 million, whereas we're looking at a total capex fully mature over $5 billion. Our annual operating spending of $442.5 million. So the annual taxes on operational spending is 19, almost $20 million. That's operating spending expenditures times 4%. The direct jobs are over 2,000, 2,265 to be exact, with a $97,000 average salary. When uh, I went to Houston and was accompanied by a few of our uh, board members, we said that a, a kid coming out of high school, sticking with the program in seven years would be over $100,000. Those are real jobs. That's real middle class economy. That's, you can raise a family with that. Indirect jobs of 47, 4,757 at a national average of $40,000. So total jobs is over 7,000. The annual direct payroll earnings is 219 million. Annual indirect payroll earnings is 190 million. So annual payroll earnings is $409 million. So the annual taxes from those earnings annually is over $18 million. So creating those jobs brings in the tax base. Once again, these are from Dr. Scott, PhD in economics. His numbers are low, but in light of what we are experiencing with our, our economy and our dependence on oil and gas, we live and die by it, and our royalties, we have got to diversify. And this port and the efforts of all our community leaders in, in bringing in industry uh, is paramount. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report and also my executive director's report. Sandy, thank you very much for your, for your yes, time sir. and explaining thank this. I, I feel like these numbers seem familiar from uh, maybe a poverty installation of officers a few years back. Yeah. Yeah. It, we we uh, presented it back then, but I just thought that we need to revisit that. You know, there is, there is hope. We just need to hang tight and hang together. We need to be united in this. Certainly, certainly. And ask for, you know, the people pay their full taxes later on. You know, the Venture Global is going to get out of paying $88 million a year. That would that would bring that total of, uh, you said... Uh, and that's Venture Global's phase one. It's, sure. It's more than, than double that. Got it. But that would be nearly half a billion dollars. Yeah. And does uh, it not include the Avalorum? Uh, are there any other questions? And can you please forward the uh, the report to us? Will. Thank you very, very much. Yes, sir. Any questions from the board? Uh, Cognivish. Got a question about the uh, tall grass property. Went road back there the other day, and they, there's looks like a separator with a set of uh, about eight pipes drilled into the ground, all hooked together to that separator. You all know what that is? Hmm? I'll run it to ground and report back to you. I'm not sure if CPRA is doing whatever, but I will get back with you ASAP. Thank you. And that the, uh, payment in lieu of taxes, are we getting that off? Yes, sir. We are. And it's up to the board to, do, to direct us on how we're going to disperse it. But you want to comment to that? Our pilot. Um, they have paid the last two. It's the the payment in lieu of taxes is billed just as like a tax bill, so they will receive it. Um, I want to say at the end of it's it's 
due to them by December 1st and they have to pay it by December 31st. And that's based on the tax millage and all of that. So they will be receiving an additional bill and the balance is currently about 153 and that includes about 138,000 from last year and 15,000 from the previous year because it was prorated based on ownership, which was only about a month and a half, maybe. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Shambro, thank you very much. Do, do you bill that or does the assessor's office bill that? Um, I send it out. I work with the assessor's office. She uh, gives me the millage and the tax rules and um, she assists with the calculations and we communicate, but the billing is processed through <clears throat> our finance department. Thank, thank you very much, that, that, that helps. Are there any questions from the board? All right. Any, any well, I was getting there. Any any questions from the audience, Mr. Henry? Use a whole notebook tonight. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Uh, you were there uh, two weeks ago. Your assistant, Mr. Matthew, did a great job. Appreciate it. I, I just want to say the figure you did. And I'm with those figures. But like I said a couple of weeks ago, we're on the ground floor with this deal. I'm on the what? We're on the ground floor with this. Yes, sir. Starting on the ground floor. I just want to tell the public, and, and I, I got to say this, I'm going to hold you responsible for this. This is a new deal here. This is a new deal for Plaquemines Parish. I want to see some diversity in some of these companies, man. I want everybody to try to get a piece of this pie. That's, that's all I want. That's, I'm with you, but that's all I want. I'm not going to be too old, but you got a lot of youngsters coming up. Mm -hmm. Let them get to enjoy some of that middle class life, man. Amen. That, that, that's all. That's all. We're, you know? we're in violent agreement. Yeah. Um, I and I know those nine guys up there, we have a, a Plaquemines first mentality. So many times you got big jobs that come in here and uh, people from Houston are running. Right, yeah. We got a lot of talent here. Uh, we have a lot of kids. You know, it's a shame what's happened to trade schools. They don't do those anymore, and we're feeling it. Uh, we have programs uh, that these employers are talking about instituting in the, in the high schools and also tapping into the junior colleges to train these kids. Not everybody's going to go off to college, I agree. Yeah. but... You know, if kid goes to high school here, he's got a, a bright future right here in Plaquemines Parish. And uh, if you're here in Plaquemines Parish and you don't have a job in five years and you just don't want one. That, that, that's all I want, you know. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sandy, last week I I'd mentioned uh, when the presentation was going on up in Bell Chase and our Inland River partners were here that uh, when Mr. Henry asked if uh, local people would have these jobs, I said that there would be a commitment from the port to, to work on workforce development uh, as an integral part of the project just as much as the engineering, the design, or driving the pilings. Um, maybe at an upcoming uh, board meeting, you could present what y'all have underway uh, in regard to the container port, how these jobs are going to be uh, directed towards Plaquemines residents as much as legally possible. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. And the, the main mission of that meeting last time with these inland ports coming, because a lot of times, you know, when you, when you live here, you can't see it. You've just been here all your life, and you can't see that that property, their citrus land, is going to be the biggest port on the Gulf Coast. You know, and people can tell you that. I, I, I see it when I tell people, and they're looking at me like, where, what planet are you from, man? And not only can you not see it here, but I wanted to give a feel of what goes on here is going on in that inland port uh, vertical uh, integrated uh, network that we put together. These people are getting ready to spend millions, millions to be part of that inland port network. Um, Next week, we have a, a, a teleconference with the, uh, with the governor of Missouri. He's got four of these ports in his state, and he's putting a huge initiative together to make sure that this is viable. 
Other states are spending money. We got the the governor of Illinois is putting in the port of Cairo forty million dollars to be in this network. So they're seeing it. It's just it it's it started here, and with the American Patriot Holdings going to these inland networks, and with the rail connection we have with the inland port of Dallas. And let me tell you, the inland port of Dallas is probably going to be bigger than all of the inland port put together. It is huge. And in 2012, they got a, a major engineering firm to do a infrastructure gap analysis on what they needed, the infrastructure they needed to bring the rail in from the West Coast. After they saw our project, and got in bed with us. This year, they were going to update that um, that study, and in midstream, they decided to tell the engineering company, "We want you to reverse and do the gap analysis from all the that rail coming from the Port of Plaquemines." So they are totally on board with it. You saw what one of their commissioners came in and and talked about. So, Mr. Chairman, it's huge. Absolutely love that commitment to where, you know, folks from here could uh, get those jobs where. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? All right. What about the public? No, oh, please. Boeing's. And just state your name and address, please. Michael Vogt from Bell Chase. Uh, I have a, a question. I'm hearing all of this about the ports and all, but I haven't heard one person ask about infrastructure. Um, it has nothing to do with the bridge. It has to do with two lanes of highway can hold two lanes of traffic. How are they going to get this past Bell Chase, past Grant? I mean, is the port taking into consideration this already exceeded traffic volume going through Bell Chase? Are they going to widen the Bell Chase Highway from the front entrance of the base to the new bridge they propose into three lanes? Because you can only put two lanes of traffic on two lanes of highway. That's just my concern. Yeah, please, please stick around, Mr. Vogt. Um, you know, I can could, I could speak for myself here that, you know, I've, I brought up a lot of these concerns. When uh, Venture Global is under construction, it's going to use one million gallons of fresh water a day. That is one quarter of our fresh water supply on the west bank of the river. Um, there's, there's going to be impacts here. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, in the meantime, there's going to be no local property tax for 10 years, $88 million that's going to be exempted that we're not going to see to deal with those very real impacts. So, you know, when I ask for those kind of things, like the container port needs to pay its its full ride when it comes here, it's to address those very, very real issues. So we can build a Peters Road bypass. We could take care of our roads here as we should be able to. We can make sure we have the adequate fresh water supply with good pressure. We could put out fires on both sides of the river. Right. You know, and I, the Peters Road bypass would be the bridge that you want to toll. Uh, we're yes, we're in full not agreement the with that. Bridge, you know. Mm -hmm. That would be the one because that's an extra. That's a freebie. That's a shortcut. Yeah. But I'm sure the staff here has, uh, you know, has heard our our concerns on on multiple occasions. That you know we've got one shot to do this, and we don't want to be some sort of uh, industrial backwater. We don't want to we don't want to turn our backs on what makes Plaquemines Parish a great place to live. That hot high quality of life, uh, crime that's almost down to zero. You you know your neighbors. You know those mm -hmm. types of things. Uh, the schools here are uh, excellent. And a lot of thought went into those things. Um, so, you know, we understand we shouldn't be rushing and, and we should be answering these questions. Uh, and it's not just us asking or us riding around making up stuff to, you know, to ask or, or concerns, but very real concerns that, you know, members of you like you know, and the public, you know, right. have. I mean, even with the, even with the uh, curfew where the bridge isn't raising during traffic time, the traffic bills past the, past the high school, past the library, you know, um, and that's before you opening up everything, you know. To 2,000 people at peak construction. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely. So we, um, I think we're going to have to uh, do a number of different things. Uh, you know, guilty as charged. Sometimes I, I um, Maybe when I put on a little bit too much, I go buy a bigger belt. And I don't know if that's necessarily what we need to be doing here, whereas, you know, maybe we need to figure out how to keep people where they're at so we're, they're not driving in and out, those types of things. You know, how are we going to do temporary housing right where um, local people... Us. I ain't got a bridge problem. <laughs> yeah. 
where, where local people can where actually problem, benefit. That's what I'm trying to get across. Even when the bridge, you can put a seven lane, eight bridge, ten lane bridge, it's not going to make a difference <coughs> in traffic in Bell Chase. That's not a sellable feature. If you, I mean, I've lived there 58 years, and I can tell you, nothing on that bridge is going to change that traffic going through there. Um, the only way to do that is to either bypass the people from mm -hmm. the road or put more lanes. You know, Mr. Vote, when I was. Uh, campaigning, I went and knocked on every single door in the district, and I'd ask people three things, you know, what, what do you think about the diversion, what do you think about the bridge, and uh, what do you think about the oil and gas lawsuits? Um, you know, I would also ask people about the port, too, though, and, you know, oftentimes people would, would be worried about the noise, the pollution, the outsider, you know, th things of, of, of that type of nature. Um, I think sometimes this board glosses over those very real issues, and we shouldn't, you know, I mean, I can give you my commitment that I ask about those things all the time, and I always go to bat behind the scenes to ask those questions. I, I'll let my other colleagues, you know, speak for themselves here. I, uh, any, anybody else? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me say you ask very good questions and make some great observations, and those things are being taken into account, but that's for a long discussion. Uh, at public meetings, but I, I hear you loud and clear. Right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Moving down the agenda, please. Chairman's one more comment. Mr. Forche, please. You, you don't have to wait on me. I just like acknowledging folks. Rob Forche. 116 New Street. <clears throat> Mr. Sandy Sanders, um, I think you're mistaken whenever you talk about the people here in Plaquemines Parish not being able to see what's going on in this parish. I think you got more people watching than you think. And I think that you have taken an exorbitant amount of time, eight years. You should have had plenty going on in this, in this port. Uh, I happen to take a ride today out towards the west on Highway 90. And uh, I grant it, it's been about a year, maybe two years since I've been down Highway 90. Well, down Highway 90, Fuji has built almost complete a vegetable oil plant from the ground up. It was a pasture last time I passed. So, <laughs> My questions are, number one, here we've got you and this port administration fighting for the people of Plaquemines Parish, supposedly, okay, and yet we've got things going on in St. Bernard, we've got things going on in Jefferson Parish that I don't think that they even gave a second thought of putting this vegetable oil plant in Blackman's Parish, but it sure would have been nice to have it because we could have stood anything. And I believe that the people of Blackman's Parish have eyes wide open. And the problem is, is they're not seeing any results. Nothing. Buying land is great, but have a purpose for this land because this land right now has no purpose. It's a pipe dream. You've got people coming down, making presentations. You've got a guy came down and talked about a boat that's supposed to run 15 knots or 13 knots up the river. And yet this guy hadn't laid one keel yet, dude. So, excuse me, Mr. Sanders, it has not ran, it has, he has not laid a keel yet. I do believe that it's a little bit premature to be <clears throat> buying any land, any more land, unless you have a viable resident for that piece of property. We don't even have a viable resident in Venture Global because they have given you nothing but a LOI, and a LOI is nothing but a letter of intent, just for those that don't know. And that might be a letter of intent. Well, hell, I have a letter of intent to myself to become a millionaire before I die, but I'm not. Probably never will be a millionaire. All right? So letters of intent is nothing. 
All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Forshay, can you give yeah. Mr. Sanders a, a chance to, re, uh, oh, to, sure. to respond, uh, and, and then I'm, we're going to be I'm moving just on? To time. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Go right ahead. No, I'm, 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 I'm waiting on your response. I don't have a response. These things take a long time. When you're talking about putting in a $5 billion project, it doesn't happen real, real quickly. But I understand what you're saying. I, I fully take it to heart. And if there's anybody that wanted to see it happen earlier, it would be me. All right. Due to time constraints, we'll be moving on. Thank you very much, Mr. Forche. Thank you. So, so I can't respond to this. Because my response to this is, in working with Kiewit for many years, we built ethanol plants, refineries, in way in more, less than two years, not eight, two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it right there, Got it. just to satisfy the time restraints. Thank you. Sure, and, and just as a reminder, if, if you could, you know, please address the board, and we'll, you know, definitely make sure the staff. Um, <coughs> can answer satisfactorily. Yeah. All right, um, moving down the agenda, please. Discussion and update on the executive calendar. Commissioner Rousseff. Yes, um, am I on? Uh, this is an old issue. It's been around for six months uh, and there's no update. We've had a lot of discussion earlier about transparency and wanting us to be part of it. And without repeating what we said earlier today, at the last meeting you attended, which was about a month ago, you said that you were, it was up to you to do it, and it still hadn't been updated. So I'm wondering when will this calendar be an accurate reflection of what the administration is doing? Uh, I notice on here that on Tuesdays, is that a day off for the, for the staff? Because there's nothing scheduled on Tuesdays. And I notice that uh, everything is duplicate all the way through uh, November on this calendar. There's, yeah, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There are duplications because there are reoccurring meetings. Um, but the calendar doesn't show, like today uh, and yesterday, I should have been at an AAPA virtual meeting all day. But he was overcome by events. And that happens quite often. Now, as far as the calendar being updated, uh, and you brought it out, and I agreed with you that... Um, there were, I was very coy with the information uh, after what you said. And I said, you know, that uh, uh, we got an LOI done. I was going to start putting more information in it. But when this whole calendar thing started, excuse me, uh, my fear was, and I related this to the chairman, that there's a lot of sensitive information on that calendar and he assured me that, no, we don't want anything covered by an NDA or anything personal. So, but I was still reluctant to put things on there that could be leaked out. After our conversation, I pretty much told Harlan, start putting a lot of information on there. And guess what? It leaked out. And I got FOIA requests from things that were on my calendar that, that no one else knew. I got submarine on two telephone interviews that I was like, okay, I get it. And so when I pulled back on the calendar, guess what? Those things stopped. So evidently, info from that calendar is not being close held. It's getting out and it's being used against us. Now, I don't think, I like to think that you nine guys want that happening to your staff. Do you? I, I, I don't think so. Mr. Sanders, this is the first we're hearing of any sort of leaks. Uh, we'd you appreciate you coming to us almost right away about that type of thing. But, but, but let me say uh, I, I hear what you're saying. Go ahead, Mr. But, Riesel. But, but let me address that. I've been, I've been printing these calendars out, and you haven't put anything on here of any sensitive nature that could have been leaked out. You didn't, you know, well, I, I, print, I print them out on a regular basis, Mr. Sanders, and I can go through this, and they haven't been changed ever since June. So I don't know what you're talking about, putting sensitive information on a calendar leaked out. You better check your staff in your in-house situation, because they're not being put on the public calendar that is shared with this board. 
Because I have I them right here. Print my staff. I think you should. Right. You're, there have been things that I will tell Harlan, make sure you put them on the shared calendar and it doesn't get done. And, and okay, and, and I will follow up with that. But let me say, there are things that have happened that could not have happened had that calendar not been leaked. Tell me one thing on this calendar that has been leaked. and I, I'm gonna I will not say that in an open meeting. You can, I'll, I'll get back with you and tell you specifically. Well, uh, but I'm going to tell you, you haven't put anything on here because I've been printing them out on a consistent basis. And there's nothing changed on here. You didn't even put the calendar on at the English turn function. Had I known that there were going to be port people there and it was on the calendar, I might have tried to attend and cancel the, the audit committee meeting. That, That's just one example. I, I sent you an email the week before. No, no, not about who was going to be there. You said a Pop meeting was there to announce the LOI. I had already seen the LOI. I've already read it in the Gazette. No one ever informed me that there were going to be representatives of three different ports there. No one. And back to the calendar at the issue at hand, there's nothing on this calendar. And if you can point to something on this calendar, I would like to know what it is because there's nothing changed on this calendar. I've been printing them out on a consistent basis, and they haven't changed. They've been duplicated all the way through November. From June to November, they've stayed the same. I think that you'll see that information was more forthcoming on the calendar after you brought this up last time. I was putting, who was in the meetings? I was putting telephone numbers down. There's there. nothing on this calendar that shows me that. Well, <laughs> then I nothing. will have to recheck because it was directed to our staff to be more forthcoming, and then it was directed to the staff to dry it up. There is so nothing I asked on you guys right hold, hold on. Do you all want our calendars to be leaked and, and our efforts being submarine? It's a red herring, Mr. Sanders. There's I nothing. don't think it's a red herring. There's I know what happened. Well, I'm telling you that if you have leaks, you better look in your staff and your office and who you're talking to because they're not being shared with this board on the calendar. I will dig in and I will make sure that what needs to be shared, what you're asking for, make sure it gets on the shared calendar. I agree. There are some things that I recheck. I said, I want that on the shared calendar, and it's not. So, again, I'll accept that there are probably things that should be on the shared calendar that have not made the shared calendar. I will double down on my efforts, and I know I said that to you last time. I know, but, but, but I want to clear up right now that there's nothing on this calendar that was leaked. <laughs> Because it was I'm sorry to disagree with you. Point well, taken, I mean, Commissioner Cognovich. I'm asking you to it give was. it one time because I printed them out and nothing has changed. Okay, Commissioner Cognovich. Well, it I is know, what it is. I know it wasn't me because I told you. I'm not asking who it is. I'm not, Hubbo. Email okay. me and I have I'm just saying email. that information was only put on there and was only shared with nine people. I told and you it's to coming email, back to us. Because I'm not going to look for it. Send it in an email to me. And I'm sorry you asked that last time, and I failed to do that. And, and, I will. and to that point, uh, Mr. Cognovich, do you are you asking for a, you're asking for a horror copy? Do we email it to you, fax to you, what? email it, email it to you of that I don't day, have time the week? To go looking. Okay, so you're looking for day, week, month. What? How do you want it? The monthly calendar. Okay, the month. Okay, okay. got it. All right. and, and you're right. You you did ask that last time, and I I got it. Thank you. I think it's just better when we're all on the same page. We avoid this. I know, but I, I don't can, like Can we just, idea. can we please uh, all right, I'll continue I'll with this, but there's nothing on here that has been changed. Uh, moving down. Leaked. Okay. Are there any questions from the board or audience? All right, moving down the agenda, please. 3A financial report budget to actual. All port commissioners have been provided a 2020 budget, total budget report, and a detailed budget report with actual expenditures shown as August as of August 31st, 2020. As of August 31st, 2020, the port would have completed 67% of the year. Any expenditure categories with less than 28% remaining, and that gives a 5% um, below budget would uh, yield immediate attention. Currently, we have no expenditure categories that is below the 28% remaining. Revenues with more than 38% remaining to be earned would be would yield immediate attention. And currently, our total revenues is at 34%. 
and that's on a total basis. Um, our tariff revenues are being monitored closely to properly evaluate and address the effects of COVID-19 um, and what it has done on um, how has it affected the port's activity. Based on a recent World Trade Center uh, transportation meeting, um, the uh, some of the other ports and pilots have uh, communicated that the port calls and their port activities has declined. We have um, seen a decline in ours as well, and the staff had is um, have had has had a couple of budget uh, review meetings, and we have a couple of more scheduled to be able to uh, properly evaluate any changes that we want to propose to you guys um, regarding the tariff revenues. Thank you very much, Ambrella. Are there any questions from the board? We very much appreciate you preparing the financial statement for us to Yes, and discuss last, last the month meeting. there was um, our meeting for this uh, financial review was canceled, so I did um, provide you with the summary for both. Uh, last meeting I gave you all, all of the details for the budget as of July 31st, and this month I um, provided you a summary of both July 31st in August 31st in order, you know, for your comparison review and see what has changed. And if there's any questions regarding uh, any of the details or, or the summary or the change, you can just email me and I'll be more than happy to prepare it and we can discuss it at the next meeting if you want it to be public or not. Th thank you again. These are, these are really valuable. Just going to remind the public that we really should be limited to three minutes I got a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Kognovich. About that storm when I called you the other day, I, I don't know if they had any damage or not. I didn't get to go inside. Yeah, so, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Director of Administration Christy Nielsen is quarterbacking to see if there's any damage assessed from the last storm. Um, and we want to, we need to make sure we have a third party go out and assess if there's any, any issues. So she's quarterbacking that. If she has anything to report, I can definitely report that back at the next meeting if you like. Uh, and for sake of time, I'll make sure we send you an email out on any updates regarding that prior to. Thank you. Mr. Forche. Uh, Mr. Blake. Or uh, Councilman uh, Blake. I got a question. Sir, yes, Peter. To, uh, Per, uh, uh, ask you, per, you per our attorney's uh, advice. License? Okay, so I want to know whether or not this budget that we just talked about is on the Plaquemines Port website at this time. Shambra, the budget which the board adopts is in is on the website. We do not put our budget performance, which includes the actual expenditures, which changes weekly, daily as we receive invoices. No, we do not place that budget on the website. Shambrell, is there anything proprietary in this that shouldn't be seen by the public? I mean, you, you can see it. I mean, it, public is subject to our documents. I mean, with a proper public records request, I can issue it, but it's not standard for me to update my budget performance report on the on the um, website. We do provide a budget which shows what this board expects us to uh, sp uh, collect and spend throughout the year um, and whether or not or where we are within that budget. That's what we're here today to discuss. I give out the percentages and all. It, uh, on a monthly basis to tell you where we stand on that adopted budget. Is it is it okay if I give this to Mr. Forche? If, if you would like. I mean, it's your call. Um, we do have a process, a policy for public records that is uh, dispersed through the port's office, and it's handled by the director of administration. So, and like I say, she has a process and a policy for public records requests, any documentation, and it, you know, it goes through legal and all of that, and there's a cost at it as well. So. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. Are there any other questions from the public? I, I, have, oh. I have a response to this. Um, just like the Plaquemines Parish administration uh, for the government, 
Uh, it has been requested and also been uh, uh, agreed upon that there will be some reports that are given to the council should be posted on the public website for the public's review. This is a public organization, a public board, a public budget, and it should be. There is nothing proprietary, I'm sure, with what is reported to y'all because, of course, Sandy Sanders doesn't want any leaks to get out. So I'm sure that there's no proprietary information <clears throat> in these budgets. So I would request that there not need to be a request for information, that this should be put on there for every citizen to have the right to be able to view and look at, print, study, however they want to do it. I, I'll end it at that. I, I hear you loud and clear. Um, is, do you think uh, updated on the website monthly is adequate? Yeah. Or uh, what about quarterly so it's just a little easier on the staff? I mean, we, we'll talk about it, I mean, just the spirit of time here. Yeah, spirit of time is the only reason that I would say put it on the website mm -hmm. on a, on, because it's already being done. So it would be very easy to put it on the website. It's not like there's something being asked to be done special. It's already being done, right? Thank you, Mr. Forshee. All right, any other questions from the public? Uh, any other questions from, from the board? Moving on, please. Number four, bids and advertisements, there are none. Number five, introduction of ordinances and resolutions. I have several, Mr. Chairman. Okay, please begin. Under Commissioner Blank, a resolution establishing the date, time, and place of public hearings on the proposed 2021 budget, operating budget, and capital improvement budget as submitted by the, the Executive Director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to authorize the Council Secretary to place the necessary public notice in the Plaquemines Gazette and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Thank you. The resolution authorizing Maynard J. Sandy Sanders, Executive Director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, to lease a particular tract of land to Philway Construction LLC and otherwise to file with respect thereto. A resolution electing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Chairperson for 2021 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. A resolution electing the Plaquemines, Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Vice Chairperson for 2021 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. A resolution to cancel the November 26 and December November 26, 2020 and December 24, 2020, regularly scheduled port meetings due to the Thanksgiving holiday and Christmas holiday and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. That is it for the introductions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Barb. Okay. All right, moving along, please. Item 6E, a resolution of the Plaquemines Parish Council acting as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, authorizing and directing the initiation of litigation related to the proposed Bell Chase Bridge project, authorizing and directing the Port Chairman Richie Blank to engage special counsel for such litigation and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I also offer an extra second. 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 All right. Offered by Roussel, seconded by LaFrance. Let me uh, just be very brief with this. This is the authorization to move forward with the effort to have the toll on the Bell Chase Bridge addressed. Uh, we've been in negotiations. We have had a lot of discussion on this issue. Uh, I believe we're in on firm legal ground to be able to file this suit Have we decide to do so. This will be the authorization for the attorney to, to move in that direction. Uh, I believe that uh, the company and the state have no incentive to negotiate anything with just an ask. And we learned that in the last week with the meeting that was held uh, by the chairman, the vice chairman, and the staff. Uh, this is an effort to reduce the uh, $700 million number that will be extracted out of the community from this toll bridge. Uh, I believe that the profit margin in this project is excessive. I think that the people should not have to pay for ingress and egress out of the parish, uh, that the canal was dug by the federal government, the bridge was paid by the local government many years ago, and now we're being held hostage to 
a project that is an experimental one-time, first-time project for the state. Uh, I don't have any fear about the state and retaliation. Uh, the state gets sued on a regular basis. And more importantly, this is a situation where the state actually did not follow the law. Now, because they are the state, they do not deserve a pass for not following the law. Whether you're intimidated by it because you're filing against the state or not, the law is the law and it's for everyone, and they did not follow it. And I'm not going to go into any more discussion of this, but this is the last chance that I see that we have to bring them to the table for final negotiations to see if there's any relief for the people of Plaquemines Parish. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roussel. Any other questions from the board? Staff? Public? Mr. Henry, please. Two weeks ago, I had a question, was this deal about the project itself or the tolls? Well, I found out today it's about the tolls. My deal is, are we going to negotiate to lower the toll fees, or are we going to negotiate to eliminate the tolls altogether? What are we going to negotiate about? If, if the question to me is, if that question's to me? Yes, sir. I, I, well, I, would, I would just like to say that we're in ongoing negotiations, and we need to be mindful of that. Wait, did I make the public? Look, we we have an ask of the company and the state to work with eliminating the toll for local residents. That is the main ask, if that answers your question. Eliminate? Eliminate the toll to zero. Okay. And the company, by our figures, will still make in the three to $400 million profit range. They want the people to know. I want them to know as well. All right, Mrs. Newberry. Yeah, I, I just want to re remind the people, um, and Mr. Russo's right, it, it's, it's really a bad deal for the people of Bell Chase. I know a lot of the, the citizens want a new bridge. Um, I know um, this was very controversial earlier this year with Mr. Black, um, or last year with Mr. Black um, talking about negotiating maybe 25 cents, and I think that's where, where we're going to start as what uh, Mr. Wilson had negotiated with whoever he negotiated with, whether it was the administration or the port, or I, I don't I don't know whether it was Mr. Black. I don't know who his negotiations was with, but I just want to remind the public, if we move forward with this um, litigation, that we are at risk at losing a bridge. Um, so I just want to remind you all of that, and thank you. All right, thank you very much. Are there any other questions from the board or the audience? All right, hearing none. All right, and please let the record reflect that um, ooh, uh, the vote fails. Thank you very much. That's great for our negotiating power. Yeah. At least you tried. Yeah, I, I right, moving thank, on. I want to thank my colleagues for um, at least entertaining it. Uh, I think the people lost today, and it's a sad situation to uh, abandon the effort to try to negotiate a better deal. Thank you. Unbelievable. Moving down the agenda, please. <coughs> 7A1, 7A, introduction of resolutions wherein suspension is being sought. This item has been withdrawn. Thank you. Number eight, approval of the September 10, 2020 meeting minutes. I'll offer. Seconded by Rousseau. Yes. Yes. Mr. Gooey. <clears throat> All right, nine zero, and a motion to adjourn by Blink, seconded by Kognovich.
please let the record reflect that uh, is 9-0. What's the current time, please? Uh, it looks like... 7 8 All right. Uh, please let the record reflect. Uh, we call the uh, Plaquemines Parish Port... Uh, sorry, Plaquemines Parish Council serving as the sole governing authority of Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District uh, to a close at... Uh, looks like 7 now.